viewers and welcome to Movie Central, the place to talk about movies, TV shows based on movies, toys based on movies, games based on movies, and rides based on movies. I'm your host, Mr. CCS, and these are my pets, George the Gorilla, Kahala the Dolphin, and Frank the Sea Turtle. Well, this is it. It took a long time to get here, but we finally made it to the finale of this season, and I could not be more excited because today... We're going to be talking about two very recent blockbusters that not only stand on their own, but are also both the best entries to their respective franchise. But before we do that, let's break down the history of both monsters featured in these two movies and how they've crossed over. So, obviously, I've talked a lot about both Godzilla and King Kong throughout the course of this season. Kong, of course, came first with the original 1933 classic, and Godzilla arrived back in 1954, and has the bigger franchise with over 70 years of crossovers, standalone stories, and reboots. Kong, on the other hand, is much more contained, with very few sequels and spin-offs, but he has a few reboots to make up for it, with both the 1976 and 2005 remakes being popular respectively. In 1962, Kong and Godzilla cross paths with King Kong vs. Godzilla, which was about, go figure, the two monsters fighting in one another. I've never seen this film, but I've heard that the general consensus is that it is simply a product of its time. I will say that the idea of both the Monster of America and the Monster of Japan clashing is a great idea, and had the potential to make for a big budget movie. Lo and behold, Warner Brothers and Legendary Pictures answered that call with the announcement that the two monsters would clash in the newly formed Monsterverse. Of course, it was stated not to be a remake of the 1962 movie, but rather a reimagining that fits within the more serious tone established by the earlier movies in the new franchise, and would be released in 2020. Unfortunately, we all knew how that turned out. I hated 2020 mostly because we couldn't go out to the theaters to see new movies. However, at the beginning of 2021, Warner Brothers officially released a trailer and had the movie set for a March release in both theaters and other new streaming service, HBO Max, which is now known as Max. From the end of 2020 to the end of 2021, Warner Brothers released all of their films into theaters and onto the streaming service for a limited time during the run, with the big 2021 releases after the crossover movie being Mortal Kombat, Space Jam A New Legacy, and Dune. When the movie was released, it did well for being released during pandemic becoming the first major box office hit of that weird period, and it did pretty well critically as well. In 2022, due to the success, it was announced that the film would receive a sequel, which I didn't have too many hopes for, but as I saw trailers, I became increasingly more excited. That movie was released back in March of this year, and while critics didn't care for it, the movie made over half a billion dollars, and a sequel is set to be released in 2027. However, the reasons why I decided to review these two together is for two reasons. The first of which is that both films are very similar in tone and were released around the same time in their respective years. And also, both films are directed by Adam Winger, something the third film will not have in common with its prequels. So, with all of that in mind, what are my thoughts on these two massive crossover movie events? It's time to talk about it. This is Godzilla vs. Kong, and its sequel Godzilla and Kong, The New Empire. Kong and his protectors undertake a perilous journey to find his true home. Along for the ride is Gia, played by Kaylee Hoddle, an orphan girl who has a unique and powerful bond with the mighty beast. However, they soon find themselves in the path of an enraged Godzilla, as he cuts a swath of destruction across the globe. The initial confrontation between the two titans, instigated by unseen forces, is the only beginning of a mystery that lies deep within the core of the planet. Godzilla and the Almighty Kong face a colossal threat hidden deep within the planet, challenging their very existence and the survival of the human race. So, my thoughts on both films separately are very similar, but my thoughts on them together are as follows. These two, by far, are the best films in the MonsterVerse. They know what they are, and they don't try to take themselves too seriously. That's what works best about both of them. The two Godzilla films took themselves somewhat seriously, and that kind of worked, but 
more for the first film, and Kong Skull Island was the perfect balance of fun and monsters. Obviously, I've always liked Kong more than Godzilla, so my preferred tone was that of what Skull Island was doing. I'm happy to report that the two crossover films take the fun B-movie approach, and I friggin' love that. Overall, however, I think I prefer the second one more. To tell you how, I'm gonna show you that I have most of the action figures. Right, let's, let's grab them here. I have Kong himself with the Beast Glove. Both versions of Godzilla, you have the standard version and the... Uh, evolved version. This video is not sponsored by the toy company, by the way. I just have these and I think they're really cool. Suko, who also came with this mini Godzilla thing, and then the main villain of the movie, the Scar King. I'm still trying to get my hands on Shimo and Kong without the Beast Glove, but I'm sure I will in the near future. Besides that, however, the new Empire ties everything together really well and massively expands the lore of the franchise, and it also focuses more on the monsters, which is always a good thing. That said, however, the novelty of seeing Godzilla and Kong in a major production is what I love most about the first film, and that cannot be understated. So yeah, I absolutely love both of these movies, and nothing is going to change that. So let's dive into the film and see what works about both of them, not on the storytelling level. So, both Godzilla vs. Kong and the New Empire have human characters, but they were all interesting to me. The best of the human characters was Gia, and that's because I loved her relationship with Kong. They were surrogate father and daughter, and that always made me smile. It's also great to have some representation in here, from not just the Asian American community, but also the deaf community as well. I have to give props to actress Kaylee Hoddle, just for being in a large media franchise and also being one of the best young actresses currently working. She is going to be in the next generations of actors of my filmmaking generation, as I strive to become a filmmaker, and I can't wait to see where her career goes. As far as the other two characters that are in both movies, we have Dr. Eileen Andrews and Bernie the Podcaster, and they were both very interesting. Eileen, serving as Gia's adopted mother, worked for me and didn't feel like a white savior at all. This felt like a genuine mother-daughter relationship, and you can clearly see how much these two actually care for one another. Rebecca Hall did a great job portraying this type of character, and I can only hope to see where she goes in the future. Finally, we have Bernie. I think all of his jokes landed for me, and I love the concept of an average guy reporting on the world we live in that is surrounded by monsters. Brian Tyree Henry is always great no matter what the cost is, and this is no different. While it's not his best performance, it is still a great one at that. I also hope to see more of him in the future. Okay, now let's talk about the characters that appeared in one or the other of these two movies. In the first film, we have the return of Mark and Madison Russell, as well as Dr. Nathan Lind, played by Alexander Skarsgård, and Josh Valentine, played by Julian Dennison. Mark and Madison being in the first film works for a few reasons. We get to see how these two are living after the death of Emma, and also because Kyle Chandler is now in two separate King Kong films, and that's a huge trade. Madison serves a larger role since she helps Bernie uncover the mystery of the villains of the movie, but it was good to see how her and Mark's relationship evolved. He's a lot more protective of her this time around, and she's trying to right the wrongs of her mother. At the end of the day, these two still love each other, and that's all that matters. These two come back in the future, I'm excited to see how they have evolved since this film. Moving on, we have Nathan Lynn. Out of all the characters, I'd say he might be my least favorite in this movie. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy the fact that he's a man that is trying to study the Hollow Earth, and that he's willing to help out, but I'd be lying if I said I missed him in this scene. That said, Alexander Skarsgård did a great job with what he was given, and again, if he were to come back, I wouldn't be against the idea. I just need to see more of him. Finally, there's Josh, who serves as the comic relief foil to Madison, and was pretty amusing. Julian Dennison is very funny, and this movie fully showcases that to a T. As for the other characters introduced in the second film, my favorite of the bunch was Trapper, played by Dan Stevens. 
Not only was he extremely charismatic, but he also was a lot more interesting than Lind. You are told that he and Eileen are close friends, and that is very evident in all of their scenes together. He was such a great addition to the cast, and nothing's gonna change that. Oh, and the scene where he's extracting Kong's tooth is easily one of the best parts of the movie. It's so funny. There is also Mikhail, played by Alex Ferns, who was just a douchebag that the movie made a joke out of once they killed him, and you best bet I was thrilled once that happened because not only did it make for a funny joke, but also a way to set up how dangerous the world of Hollow Earth is. Okay, now that I've talked about the human characters in both movies, I have to talk about the human villains before we move on to the real highlights of the movies. The human villains are only in Godzilla vs. Kong, and they are the Simmons family, Walter and Maya, played by Damien Bashir and Isa Gonzalez, and Ren Sirizawa, played by Shen Uguri. If you can't tell, Ren is the son of Ishiro Sirizawa from the first two movies, and it was interesting to see the, one of the human allies of Godzilla's son go turncoat and try to help the villains. The Simmons family are interesting too. Maya does a lot of the dirty work while Walter runs the business side of things. Yep, these are the villains in the suits, but I don't mind them because they're not primarily the threat and are taken out as soon as they are fully established. Now that we've got all the humans out of the way, it's time to talk about my favorite parts of both movies. One of the best parts about both of these movies is the fact that they focus on the monster characters, especially the new Empire. There are more scenes of the monsters in both of these movies than any other of the films thus far, and that was a great freaking thing. Let's talk about Godzilla first. In the first film, we see that he's more aggressive and far more monstrous than he's ever been. He really packed a punch during the fight scenes and whenever he appeared on screen. In the new Empire, he felt more like a side character of anything, but that's not to say that he had a lot of cool things to do, including getting a pretty awesome upgrade with pink dorsal fins and a maze tail. While I prefer blue on the big guy, the pink actually did him justice, and still gave him the look of a force to be reckoned with. However, the best monster character was Kong. Not only is he the focus in both movies, which I really like, but he also feels deeper and more fleshed out than he's ever been in any of the films. In these movies, we see Kong wants his purpose. In the first film, Skull Island is no longer the home he knew, and he eventually finds a new place to rule, the Hollow Earth. In the second film, he's lonely and wants to find others to live in harmony, hence why he takes in Suka, or as I like to call him, Little Kong and eventually becomes the leader of the tribe of apes he eventually finds. Not only did this movie fully establish Kong as a leader, a true king, and even a dad, but also the best character in the entire MonsterVerse. And that's a lot coming from someone who massively prefers the original King Kong and the 2005 remake over these movies by a lot. Still, I love what they do with Kong in these movies, and that will never ever change. I can't wait to see what he does in the third movie, because I have no doubt it'll be fantastic. Now, let's move on to the monster villains. In Godzilla vs. Kong, we have Mechagodzilla. Now, Mechagodzilla has been around for a very long time in the franchise, and has always been seen as an iconic villain, but I've never been the biggest fan of this thing. That is, until I saw the new version in Godzilla vs. Kong. First things first, I love the visual design. It looks a lot like the real Godzilla, but at the same time looks far more menacing and lifeless. I also massively prefer the red eyes over and the atomic lasers over the yellow ones because red is far more frightening. I also love the fact that King Ghidorah's consciousness is what powers this thing, and I can sort of see this as Ghidorah's revenge for what Godzilla did to him at the end of King of the Monsters. Overall, Mechagodzilla was an awesome villain, and one of the highlights of Godzilla vs. Kong for me. In the new empire, we have the Scar King, and I'm just gonna say it, this guy is one hell of a great villain. First things first, this is someone we know has committed mass genocide, has slaves, and rules with an iron fist. No matter how pathetic he may look, he still has an edge to him that cannot be understated. Secondly, he's such a petty douchebag, I mean, come on. He mocks Kong in front of the tribe of apes, and relishes in the torture he gives. He felt like an actual character, and that's what I really liked about him most. 
finally, his inclusion greatly expands on the lore of the franchise and establishes him and King Ghidorah as the main antagonist of the series as a whole. We're told that he's one of the reasons why the Titans can't exactly coexist, and the reason why the apes are secluded society, hence why Kong was always lonely. However, the Scar King does have one last ace on his sleeve, and should something go wrong, he will use that ace. And that ace is Shimo, the Ice Titan. Not only is she his pet, but she's also a massive force to be reckoned with. Her frost breath can instantly freeze a victim or give them a painful frostbite. Yet at the same time, it's sad to see her in the state she's in, and it's also extremely satisfying once she's free from the Scar King's control and becomes Kong's pet and advisor. Shima was such a great inclusion to these films, and I can't wait to see what else she has to offer in the future. Overall, the monsters in these films, without a doubt, are the best parts of the films, and that will never change no matter how long I reflect on both of them. The effects in both of these movies are fantastic. All of the monsters brought to life look freaking detailed and perfect. Kong with pounds of fur and scars. Godzilla's dorsal plates looking spiked and sharp. Mechagodzilla's robotic presence and glowing red eyes. The Scar King's red fur covered in war paint and a skeletal trophy. And Shimo's scales being a beautiful snow white and glowing blue are all designs that didn't need that much detail but have them anyways. The world of the Hollow Earth also looks very colorful, beautiful, and surrounded by pure life, and is one of the best looking environments, at least to me, put to the big screen. And that says a lot, because the past few years have brought us some of the greatest looking worlds like Atlantis, Pandora, Canto Bight, and Counter Earth. Still, Hollow Earth looks fantastic, and that cannot be understated. Both films were composed by Junkie XL, who has fast becoming one of the best composers working today. Not only did he give us action-packed soundtracks, but he delivered on quite a few somber and quiet moments too, which is always a plus. These movies both feel complete with the score, and that's something I do not say lightly. I'd talk about the tone, but I already addressed it above, so I'm instead going to talk about the action sequences I love the most. In Godzilla vs. Kong, both the battle on the ocean and the battle of Hong Kong where Godzilla and Kong are fighting one another are fantastic, and the ensuing battle with Mechagodzilla is also great. In The New Empire, everything from Kong battling the Red Stripes, to his battle with the Scar King, to Godzilla fighting Tiamat, and the final battle between Godzilla, Kong, Suko, and even Mothra, all against the Scar King and his forces, had me giddy with excitement in the theater, and I was more than happy to be along for the ride. One of the greatest action scenes in the world, these two movies really gave us something special and that cannot be understated. What else can I say? Both of these movies are not just love letters to the Godzilla and Kong franchises, but also what the MonsterVerse should continue to be. Fun, energetic, and epic battles between the Titan forces. Both of these movies are exciting, emotional, and packing with many punches, and I cannot stress enough at how much I love both of them. Which is why they both get the enthusiastic 10 out of 10. The epic battle of the Titans that always excites me, no matter the cost. Well, that's it for this mega review, and that's it for this season. Throughout the course of Monster Mayhem, I've loved films, I've hated them, or I've been somewhere in between. But I definitely had a blast making all of these reviews and revisiting and experiencing these movies for the first time. I'm glad I did it, and I will always look back on this season as one of the best I've done. As per usual with my finales, I'm going to be MIA for about a month. But when I return, I'll not only come back with a more challenging season, but also a season that I hope you'll enjoy. Until then, and with that said, my name is Mr. CCS, these are my pets, this is Movie Central, and that, my friends, is a wrap. See y'all in a month.